Thousands of mammoth explosions rock our sun every year. You might expect this explosive force to come from nuclear reactions in the core. But in reality, what drives all outbursts of solar violence is magnetism. Since Earth rotates as a solid, our magnetic field is simple. We have two poles, north and south. This is what makes a compass so useful for finding your way around the planet. But imagine if instead of two poles, you had one to 10 million. This is what happens on the sun. The sun's magnetic field is a tangled web because even though it's held together by gravity, the plasma doesn't rotate evenly. Plasma at the equator rotates once every 25 Earth days, while plasma at the poles takes roughly 35 days to circle once. The sun has what we call differential rotation. You have all of this plasma that is really turning and turning, and that causes magnetic field lines to become twisted and intertwined and mixed up. Although magnetic field lines are invisible, we know they exist on the sun by looking at features called coronal loops and prominences rising up into the solar atmosphere. Just as metal shavings line up in the presence of a simple magnet, these loops of plasma perfectly outline the magnetic structures that support them from below. These plasma arches are so tall and wide that you could slide a planet as big as Jupiter right through them. Sometimes magnetic fields can twist plasma in the sun's atmosphere into majestic helical shapes called flux ropes. Magnetic flux rope is sort of like a slinky. The magnetic field line is wrapped around many times in a helical structure. And when you have highly twisted magnetic field lines, it carries a lot of stored free magnetic energy. And sometimes it will even kink in on itself, which gives it even more stored magnetic free energy. These plasma prominences can last for weeks or months, but eventually the stored up energy has to be released and the mass is flung off into space. Where the sun's magnetic field is at its most twisted and complex, heat bubbling up from below is capped and the material is cooled by as much as a thousand degrees what results are relatively dark blemishes on the solar surface called sunspots. Sunspots are only dark in relation to the bright material around them. If you could somehow suspend one alone up in space, it would shine 10 times brighter than the full moon. These apparently tiny blemishes are actually plasma craters the size of the entire Earth. Galileo was one of the first modern scientists to observe sunspots. Using a telescope, he projected an image of the sun onto paper and traced it. He realized that the blemishes were moving across the face of the star, which was the first indication that the sun rotated. Not only does the sun rotate, but sunspots themselves can actually spin like hurricanes on the solar surface. And when they do, their magnetic field lines become extremely twisted. Twisted magnetic field lines mean more energy, and more energy means the potential for huge eruptions. Think of a rubber band as a magnetic field line. If you twist it, and you twist it enough, it's going to have all that energy, and when you let it go, it's going to release. If you just take an untwisted rubber band and release it, it's not going to fly. When a sunspot unleashes its magnetic energy, what results are the most colossal explosions in the solar system, solar flares. A single flare releases as much as a billion megatons of energy, the combined power of a million volcanic eruptions on Earth. They appear as these very bright regions, and they're so bright because the temperature is so high on the order of 10 million degrees, and they can last for hours but the energy is massive. The whole explosion is equivalent to millions of nuclear bombs leaving the surface of the sun all at once. 